Hi, I did a review and teardown of this UTG 962E 60MB version of the Unity Arbitrary Waveform Generator a few weeks ago, and it had received quite a bit of enthusiasm. And there were quite a few folks asking me offline what are some of the compromises Unity had to make in order to get this ArpGen down to this attractive price range. After all, it is quite a capable unit. So here I am going to point out a few limitations that I think you should at least be aware of, depending on the specific usage you have in mind. Now, these limitations may or may not be critical to you, and for most of the hobbyists, I think these limitations shouldn't be an issue anyway. The first limitation I wanted to point out is this maximum sampling rate at 200 mega samples per second. This unit has a maximum bandwidth of uh, 60 MHz. So at this sampling rate, really when you are outputting a 60 MHz signal, you are only going to have three samples per cycle. And uh, your signal's fidelity is highly correlated with the number of samples it has in a specific period. And uh, given the limitation of this 200 mega samples per second, you're only going to achieve a very high output frequency of uh, your simplest waveforms, such as sinusoidal. And for all the complex waveforms, you cannot simply achieve that output frequency of 60 megahertz. The second limitation that I wanted to point out is the slow fixed slew rate of your rectangular or pulse waveforms. So if you recall, when we set it to square wave or we set it to the pulse waveform, we don't really have control on the rising edge of this waveform here at all. So if your system requirement is such that you require a specific slew rate, and you can't really use this waveform generator to do that. And the next limitation perhaps is more important that you really should be aware is that uh, both of these channel outputs are ground referenced. So if we test these uh, output here, you will see that they are actually connected. Now, this may or may not be an issue, depends on your specific usage. But for, however, for most of the function generators, and ideally you want the channels to be fully independent so that you can use them to power portions of your circuitry without affecting the circuitry operation. So one example being that if you are testing, say, a bipolar transistor's characteristics, you want it to input your base signal and also you want to sweep the, your collector signal. And in that case, you would require both channels to be independent in order to give you the correct output readings. And the next limitation comes with this uh, external modulation capability. And uh, this unit also for every single waveform, you can do the modulation and both internal and external. So when you look at the modulation here, you will see that uh, you can modulate with any of these predefined waveforms here. But uh, all these waveforms, as you can see, these, these are all uh, internally modulated by this uh, arbitrary waveform generator. And uh, the only thing you can do external is this uh, FSK, frequency shift keying here. And uh, that is actually useful, but uh, that's the only one you can select. For instance, the source can select external. So in that case, you're gonna be inputting a signal into your function generator to modulate the signal. But for everything else, you don't have that uh, capability here. So modulation, if you do line, and nothing can be uh, external except for the FSK. And we have this limitation because we don't really have a input signal analog portion here as everything, the modulation and uh, waveform generation is pretty much done inside the FPGA uh, instead of uh, using any analog method here. And for the external modulation to work, you'll have to have an analog input portion. Another thing I wanted to point out is that its uh, arbitrary waveform generation capability is somewhat limited. For instance, if you look at the built-in waveforms, we, well, we do have a, quite a few of these arbitrary waveforms. And you can see here, we have about uh, 24 of these uh, waveforms, but they're not that sophisticated and you can really control a lot of the parameters. For instance, there's no way for you to control the different shape inside each of these uh, waveforms, except for perhaps the frequency here. And uh, so this is a very limiting. And if you look at, for instance, 
uh, one of my favorite is a staircase. It only offers a symmetrical one. I would have preferred if they offered one, for example, just one sided staircase going up, and that can come in quite handy in a lot of applications. And if you look at the also the parameters we have control, we don't really have control of the number of uh, stairs that you can have in on this waveform. And the only thing we have control over are the frequency, amplitude, offset, and your face. And as we demonstrated last time, the supplied arbitrary waveform generation software is not all that great either. And perhaps one of the biggest problem of the software and also the unit design is that the manually generated the custom arbitrary waveforms, there's no way for you to be able to persist onto the unit itself. Therefore, as soon as you turn off the power, the waveform is gone. Like I said earlier, this is a really quite decent unit as long as you understand the limitations. Now, I have been playing around with this for quite a few weeks now, and I really like it. So let's do something fun that you don't see very often. Okay, I thought it would be fun to plot a Lisa Zhu figure using my HP 7044A plotter and the arbitrary waveform generator. And uh, let's briefly take a look at the setup. For channel one, I'm outputting a 600 millihertz sinusoidal signal. And for channel two, I'm outputting an 800 millihertz sinusoidal signal. And it's important that the output frequency is very, very low as the plotter will not be able to react as fast as you it would with an oscilloscope. So let me turn on both channels. And, uh, and let me turn on my plotter. So hopefully we're going to be able to start plotting. I hope you liked the video. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave it a big thumbs up and remember to share and subscribe. I will catch up with you next time.